good evening everyone uh, i hope i'm audible to everyone we welcome you all for this uh, like uh, today's lecture on consumer law uh, now i will uh, request advocate uh, vaishali tikli to give a small introduction about uday sir good evening everyone though i have already introduced uday sir in the uh, earlier lecture but for the newcomers uh, i will uh, repeat myself and introduce him again uh sir is uh, sir is having 26 years of standing in this field and since 26 last 26 years he has been practicing in high court and subordinate courts uh and uh, he is a consumer courts advocate association uh, maharashtra president of uh, this forum uh, and also a member of bar, maharashtra bar council bar council of maharashtra and goa uh, i welcome you sir and today's topic he will be speaking on is consumer law over to you sir namaskar uh firstly today being a uh, 14th of april let me express uh, a tribute to dr babar saheb ambedkar i'm sure we are aware that he is a person who was practicing in our bombay high court who started his career in bombay now coming back to the main issue namely the consumer protection law or the consumer laws this is one of the legislation which has uh, opened uh, several uh, new opportunities new doors for the lawyers and over and above that now the new bill which was introduced in the lok sabha has been uh, gazetted the bill was passed the bill was passed in the month of december 2018 in the lok sabha it has been gazetted but not yet given effect so therefore in my sharing with uh, all friends who are sitting here i am going to point out the provisions of the act which is in existence as on today namely consumer protection act 1986 and, and i am going to make a reference about certain provisions which are introduced by virtue of the new bill but the appointed date of the day said new act is not yet uh, been declared as a result of that the act is there in the statute book but it is not yet given an effect so far let us go back to the consumer protection act and let us find out why this consumer protection act was enacted we uh, people are perhaps uh, not aware about uh, the milestones which our legislative department has also achieved this is one of such enactment which was the first in the world in 1986 there was a international convention which was uh, uh, a united nation convention based on which india implemented that international convention and the new act was enacted you will be surprised to know that this consumer protection act 1986 was a model for various other independent laws made by different countries in the world now this is an act which was enacted with a simple view to provide better protection of the interest of consumers the underline the word better the word better shows that there was something in existence there was some remedy which was already in existence but it was not sufficient to protect the interest of the consumer and therefore the new act came to be enacted that is that 1986 act so let us try to find out what were the general provisions which were available before this special provision which was made the general provision like uh, if you go to the indian penal code you will find uh, Uh, with reference to the weights and measurement there are some offenses which are created with reference to black marketing the offenses are created with reference to uh, uh, other kind of a deficiency there are provisions under the contract act like sale of goods act also so there are already provisions which are there but those provisions were not sufficient to protect the interest of the consumer 
for better understanding i'll give a illustration that there is a cooperative uh, society in mumbai or a metropolitan mumbai region and what was the remedy available at that point of time prior to consumer protection act let us try to find out if the landlord or the builder developer fails to execute the conveyance then the remedy was that under the mofa act the person will have to go to the society will have to go to the civil court for file for obtaining a decree of a uh, deem a decree of a conveyance likewise there was a remedy of going to the registrar which is known as a deem conveyance which has been introduced very recently as compared to this if you consider the new remedy namely the consumer protection act 1986 then you will find this remedy is most cheaper convenient speedy so far as that common consumer is concerned and now therefore the three simple question will come what is the meaning of the word consumer number 2 how he can be protected and number 3 what are the other features of this enactment so let us go one by one so far as the word consumer is concerned those who are interested they may note down section 2 subsection d section 2 subsection d contemplates what is the word what is the meaning of the word consumer the uh, definition is a lengthy definition but in nutshell i can tell you there are two big uh, uh, rather segments one is with reference to purchase of the goods so therefore the person who has purchased the goods will be a consumer in addition to this there is a another segment namely services the person who hires or avails of the services is also known as a consumer but so far as the goods are concerned if the goods are purchased for the for resale then the consumer protection act says that you are not a consumer because you are supposed to consume if you are purchasing it for resale then of course you are outside the scope of consumer protection act for both these namely the goods and service segment you will find there is exception namely if the goods are purchased for commercial purpose or if the services are availed for commercial purpose then there is a exclusion now something interesting let us go back to the contract act you will find the uh, uh, contract uh, act also provides the term consideration consideration includes the future consideration also can includes the past consideration includes the defer payment of system also all those different types of the contracts are covered under this act also because this says that the person who has paid money for buying the goods or the person who has paid the money for availing the services is already covered but the beneficiary is also covered so therefore the act when it was drafted at that point of time in 1986 was sufficient wide enough despite that it was realized that the by flux of time several developments have taken place in india and therefore the other amendments were required so therefore the new uh, bill was introduced it has been passed i'll come to that aspect later later now so far as the complaints are concerned the complaint can be again with reference to the defect in the goods so therefore if somebody has purchased the goods so the and he finds uh, that there is a defect in the goods then he can go back to the consumer forum and uh, or the commission and make a complaint about that there can be a deficiency in the services this deficiency in the services is a very wide term so therefore let us go back to the basic terminology namely services and those who are interested they may note down section 2 sub section o that is about the services so therefore which are those services which are covered under the act that is something interesting and therefore for the for the person uh, for the benefit of those persons who are Uh, unable to note i will like to read and that says that uh, so far as the services are concerned the terminology of a services give me one minute yes service means service of any description which is made available to the potential user and includes now kindly keep this in mind and you includes but not limited to the provisions of facilities in connection with banking so therefore all those disputes with reference to banking can come under consumer protection 
financing so therefore all finance companies can come here insurance now initially there were only four insurance companies now 24 companies are there including the multinational companies so all those insurance disputes can come here transport so transport includes the all types of the transport so therefore the private transport the air transport the sea transport all kind of a transports are covered hiring of the transport services is covered then processing something different somebody will have to apply mine and then what are that processing services that can also be brought supply of the electricity now we are aware that now there is a new act namely electricity act 2013 so therefore large number of disputes are coming up so far as the uh, that act is concerned so therefore that can also come here so supply of the electrical or other energy boarding or lodging or both so therefore hotels then restaurants all these are covered then housing construction that is also one of the big industry in respect of which already a uh, uh, rera act has been enacted but the act contemplates that there is already a uh, inclusion so far as the consumer protection act is concerned entertainment is a service so therefore qua entertainment again whatever the contracts are there you can invoke the consumer protection act amusement or uh, or the purveying of the news or other information so therefore all these are virtually covered so far as the terminology of services and as i said it's a inclusive services and not limited to those which are read out it says that there is only one exclusion namely the contract for free of charge service or a personal services so therefore those free of charge services are excluded now here i would like to make a reference about the judgment of uh, uh, vp shanta versus indian medical association because those medical uh, service providers uh, were uh, raising an issue that we are not covered under the consumer protection act matter went up to the honorable supreme court supreme court categorized uh, uh, three categories one where some fees are uh, aware so the fees are charged while providing the medical services second where are when no fees are charged at all for providing the services and third partly paid and partly free type of the services so other supreme court said that so far as the act is act is concerned the act says that free of charge services are excluded so therefore if any medical service provider is providing free of charge service to everybody irrespective of his standing race uh, religion creed whatever caste then that person is outside the purview of consumer protection so therefore that category is excluded but other two categories namely when the medical services are charged as well as some patients are charged and some patients are given free of charge even then those services are also covered under the consumer protection act those who are interested they can visit the website and uh, find out uh, the citation of uh, uh, vp shanta versus indian medical association which has created such uh, three kinds of uh, services now it also provides that uh, uh, there will be a uh, uh, one of the big definition namely unfair trade practice because there can be complaint which can be filed on the basis of the allegation of unfair trade practice those who are interested please make a note section 2 subsection r defines unfair trade practice it is a very lengthy definition but for the purpose of uh, convenience i can say that misleading advertisement then making a incorrect claim or uh, the some kind of assurance which is uh, sought to be given about the standard or the quality uh, of the product or the services all those are covered my specific recommendation to the viewers of this uh, uh, web uh, web series web lecture series that without fail please use your please use your mobile and uh, uh, go through the definition of the unfair trade practice there is also a definition by name restrictive trade practice that is under section 2 triple n restrictive trade practice those who are interested they can also go through that the, these are the four terminologies or rather five terminologies one is a defect in the code second is a deficiency then the third is a, a, a unfair trade practice fourth is a restricted trade practice and fifth is a recidivity these are the five things which are covered under the complaint so in other word if there is a defect you 
can file a complaint if there is a deficiency you can file a complaint if there is unfair trade practice you can file a complaint if there is a restrictive trade practice there you can file a complaint and the last is a residual in respect of which you can file a complaint now this is the basic uh, uh, answer to the first question namely uh, of who can be protected now the question comes that how he should be protected as we have seen that the act was having an intention to provide better protection of the interest of the consumer so therefore how a interest can be provided we we'll have to keep this in mind that uh, uh, protection of interest includes protection of the rights now why i am saying so because in the act 1986 act there was no specific provision about the rights of the consumer but we as a student of law we are aware that there is a subject by name interpretation of statute which we have studied in our law schools uh the statement of object and reason can be read as an external aid so far as the interpretation of the provisions is concerned so therefore the statement on uh, uh, and object uh, uh, statement of object and reasons of 1986 uh, enactment makes a reference to the rights of the consumer there are different rights of the consumers which are uh, provided in the uh, statement and object of the 1986 act now that thing which was left out is covered under the new act namely 2019 but as i said uh, that the new act is uh, uh, yet to uh, start its uh, effect because it has been given effect but uh, the appointed date it has been passed but uh, appointed date has not yet been declared so therefore those rights of the consumer are included in the topic by name protection of the interest of the consumer now the question will come how are you going to protect the interest of the consumer and therefore now there is a mechanism mechanism says that this act contemplates that there will be three tier system namely a, a consumer protection council so in nutshell you can say cpc consumer protection council now at the district level there will be district consumer protection council at a state level there will be state consumer protection council and at a central level there will be central consumer protection council those who are interested they can note down for district protection council section 8a for state protection council uh, section 7 and for central consumer protection council there is section 4 now what are their functions the functions are protecting the rights of the consumer so therefore again the different functions different objectives are there section 6 section 8 and section 6b a uh, section 8b are there so far as this kind of a mechanism of creation of a council is concerned but as i said that this is not sufficient and therefore there was a challenge the challenge was how are you going to provide speedy faster convenient and cheaper remedies take a case that uh, a person is uh, having some uh, problem with reference to the mobile which the person has purchased then the question is whether that person is going to file a suit for uh, uh, damages in the civil court we all are from mumbai or metropolitan region of of mumbai so therefore whether the person is going to file a suit at dindoshi or uh, uh, city civil and sessions court at uh, fort for claiming of a uh, damages and if he is dead so then how many years it is going to take and uh, the rules of uh, indian evidence act uh, uh, will uh, will require him to uh, give a expert opinion then the cross examination several thing are going to happen so therefore how how uh, uh, a convenient speedy cheaper justice can be made available to the consumer that was a question and therefore at a district level the agencies were created at a state level agencies were created and at the national level agencies were created what is this agency this is known as district forum at district level state commission at state level and a national commission at national level now this is in addition to the existing remedy now you will ask uh, sir what is this therefore whosoever who is interested please go to section 3 this section 3 contemplates that this remedy is not in derogation with the existing remedies but in addition to the existing remedies that means 
the remedy of approaching the civil court remedy of approaching the criminal court is already already in existence despite that the legislators have created an additional remedy now why people are getting attracted to the consumer protection act i'll tell you very frankly up till now from a common man's point of view or consumer's point of view there was no representation of the interest of the consumer in the judicial system the judges are selected or appointed among from amongst the advocates advocates are the persons who are uh, uh, are having a right to practice uh, the profession uh, practice the in the field of law they are highly qualified persons they may or may not have a sensitization visa with the rights of the consumer and the problems faced by the consumer therefore the act contemplates that there is a separate remedy namely a composition of the district forum state commission or national commission has been changed usually there used to be a single judge or a on a number of judges who were supposed to deliver the judgments and adjudicate different issues but this act contemplate that there will be one judicial person he will be assisted by and accompanied by two other persons out of which one will be a woman so therefore 33% reservation came automatically because large number of consumer disputes were of such a nature which were requiring some kind of a different treatment and it is well known that the uh, women at large are uh, well known for handling the disputes from a different perspective which is uh, 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 evident uh, on a, and uh, which is which has been recognized by uh, recognized uh, from time and again so therefore 2 plus 1 is a composition that one will be a female member out of uh, them out of 3 now one is a judicial two persons are remaining so far as those two persons are concerned it is uh, provided that uh, it was provided that the person should have a special knowledge in the field of consumer uh, industry also so therefore the person who is representing the consumer also got an imp uh, got an opportunity to participate in the uh, process of uh, delivering the justice now let me tell you something interesting about this act usually uh, x versus y go uh, is a case which we are filing in the course of law in the court of law and the honorable judges are supposed to deliver the judgment so therefore it is an adjudicatory mechanism here there is an adjudication and then thereafter there will be a execution of that particular judgment so therefore there will be a decree and that decree will be executed this is known as an adjudicatory mechanism but under the consumer protection act if we go back to the preamble the preamble goes to show that the object of this mechanism is to settle the consumer disputes now there is a vast difference between these two terminologies and all my young friends who are sitting on that side they can appreciate that adjudication of a dispute is different than settlement of the dispute so settlement of the consumer dispute if that is an object which was introduced in the year 1986 then of course that was one of the such ground on the basis of which large number of persons got attracted to the consumer protection act now uh, let us try to find out uh, what was uh, a composition uh, 2 plus uh, uh, 1 plus 2 1 judicial plus 2 uh, non judicial that was a composition they were having the jurisdiction to decide the cases which were having the pecuniary jurisdiction also so far as the district forum is concerned uh, at present 20 lakh or below 20 lakh is the pecuniary jurisdiction so far as the state commission is concerned 20 lakh to 1 crore is the pecuniary jurisdiction and above 1 lakh 1 crore it goes to the honorable national commission at new delhi this is a pecuniary jurisdiction now the question comes about the territorial jurisdiction because we are aware that uh, after pecuniary uh, uh, territorial jurisdiction is one of such issue on the basis of which there can be a debate so therefore it says that where the opposite party resides will be a place where you can file a complaint in addition to this act also contemplate that if there are more than one opposite party that where where one of the opposite party is having 
Filing office or branch office can also be chosen as a place where you can file a complaint. Now also the act contemplates that the, at the place where the cause of action has arisen, you can file a complaint at that particular place also. Now there will be a deviation, a deviation so far as the new act is concerned. New act contemplates that where consumer resides or where consumer is working, he, he, uh, he can file a case at that place also. Let us compare this with the provisions of the Hindu Marriage Act prior to 1976 we can we are aware that the pro, that the cases were to be filed at a place where the opposite party used to reside but 1976 amendment contemplate that uh, where the uh, uh, where the uh, woman is residing is a place where the complaint can be filed uh, she can uh, go to the court where she is uh, residing so therefore the same logic has been implemented uh, in the new act but as I said a few minutes back the appointed date has not yet been declared. Section 12, 13 and 14 of the Act is common so far as all these three uh, uh, forums are concerned, three agencies are concerned. So Section 12 contemplates how a complaint to be filed, 13 contemplates the procedure upon receipt of the complaint and Section 14 contemplates finding and the order of the agency. This is common so far as the Honorable State Commission and the National Commission at a state and a national level. So therefore, who, those who are interested, they may note down this group of section 12, 13, 14. And those are common for all those uh, uh, complaints which are filed uh, uh, before all agencies. Now, something interesting, the strict principles of CPC are not applicable so far as Consumer Protection Act is concerned. So therefore, the strict rule of CPC is not applicable. But the principles of CPC are applicable. So principles of CPC means there is a dilution. So therefore, you can't make an application like Order 9, Rule 13 of the Civil Procedure Code for setting aside ex parte decree in the uh, uh, before the District Forum or the State Commission or the National Commission. But the principles are applicable. Now there used to be a debate uh, the, about the. Uh, degree of uh, uh, evidence or the standard of the evidence. Uh, several occasions, the usual defenses were raised on behalf of the opposite party, saying that no, no, there is a need to uh, cross examine the witnesses, and therefore, this is not a case which can be summarily decided. So, therefore, let the uh, complaint be returned to the consumer for presenting it before the appropriate forum, namely the civil court, etc. But uh, by flux of time, uh, various judgments of the National Commission and the Honorable Supreme Court came, which says that uh, leading of an evidence is also permissible in the exceptional cases. So exceptional cases is contemplated as a result of that in most of the cases without cross-examination or without filing, uh, without uh, 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 asking the person to enter into the witness box, the complaint can be heard and the order can be passed. There can be a uh, group litigation, there can be a class litigation uh, with the leave of uh, the uh, agencies you can file a complaint which is for the uh, uh, group number of persons also. It also contemplates that whenever a complaint is filed, if it is with reference to the goods, then the goods can be referred to the appropriate laboratory and the laboratory report uh, will be considered and then the order can be passed. If there is a deficiency, if there is a complaint about the deficiency in the services, then with reference to the same also, the expert opinion can be obtained. And then based on that, the uh, order can be passed. That That is a procedure which is contemplated under the provisions of the Section 12, 13 and 14. Section 14 contemplates that what are the uh, types of the order which can be passed by the, uh, uh, passed by the forums agencies. Take a case that if somebody is aggrieved by the order passed by the district forum, then there is a remedy by of an appeal. The appeal goes to the Honorable State Commission. The appeal uh, limitation is 30 days. There is a uh, uh, provision for condonation of delay if just and sufficient cause is shown. But it says that the part of the amount is required to be deposited before the district forum before preferring an appeal, 25,000 or the part of the amount, whichever is lower, you can check the provisions. Now, something interesting that in the state of Maharashtra, there are 45 
such a district for 44 district forums which are established by the state of Maharashtra. So therefore, in some places there are more than one. If we are considering about Mumbai, then you will find that there are two district forum at Bandra uh, near Chetana College in the government uh, uh, collector building. That is for the suburb uh, area, namely western suburb and eastern suburb. So far as the Bombay Island is concerned at Parel near uh, MGM Hospital or MD College, Maharshi Dayanand College, you will find two forums are situated, namely the Central Mumbai and the South Mumbai Forum. Then there are uh, uh, state commissions who are also having the uh, uh, original jurisdiction which is situated at uh, opposite uh, CST and near the Kala Goda. So therefore there are two places where uh, uh, the uh, honorable members and the president of the state commission they are uh, uh, sitting and that's a place of seat. So therefore so far as the, the state commission is concerned there is an original jurisdiction as I said about the pecuniary and the appellate jurisdiction as well as the supervisor jurisdiction. Now something interesting, we are making a complaint about uh, uh, the bottleneck of the cases which are happening at the superior level. So therefore, uh, uh, therefore there is a specific provision under section 17b for providing the circuit bench of the uh, state commission. So there can be a circuit bench uh, during the tenure of Justice R.C. Savan retired judge of the Bombay High Court as a, a president of the state commission. Circuit benches of the state commissions were uh, started. There is a circuit bench at Kolapur. There is a circuit bench at Pune, circuit bench at Amravati, circuit bench at uh, uh, Nasik also. These are the circuit benches. Uh, maybe uh, once in a three month or once in a four month is a frequency uh, minimum, I can say. And uh, so far as the National Commission is concerned, the similar provision you will find under section 22 C and the National Commission is also conducting the circuit benches at Mumbai and Pune also. Now, uh, uh, all my young friends who are on that side, they are aware that there is a, a demand uh, made from time and again that uh, it is not possible for everybody to go to Delhi for uh, approaching the Supreme Court and let there be a, a circuit benches of the Supreme Court or let there be benches of the Supreme Court and then Court of Appeal will be there, but the Constitutional Court will be at uh, uh, Supreme Court. Those were the suggestions. But here is an act which has already introduced uh, circuit benches. Now, uh, so far as the procedure is concerned, as I said, it is common. So far as the person who is agreed by the order passed by the State Commission is concerned, he can go to the National Commission. The retired judge of the Supreme Court will be a president of the National Commission, retired uh, or a sitting judge of the State Commission uh, of the High Court can be a uh, president of the State Commission. Then uh, the judges from the uh, district judiciary, they are also appointed as a member. The judges from the High Court are also appointed as a member at a national level. Now uh, this is a mechanism which is provided under the Act. Now the question will come, what is the period of limitation? Period of limitation is two years from the date of cause of action. Now, usually you will find that uh, uh, with reference to all claims uh, under the Limitation Act, usually it is said that three years is the period. But uh, under the Consumer Protection Act, it contemplates that two years is a uh, period of limitation. Now, in addition to this, uh, there is a remedy by for enforcement of those provisions. Uh, namely, if there is an order which is passed by the uh, uh, any of the agents, like district forum, state commission or national commission, the person can make an application to the uh, uh, that uh, forum itself or the agency itself for getting a, a certificate. That certificate will be known as a recovery certificate. That recovery certificate will be transferred to the collector uh, for recovery of the amount as if it is areas of the land revenue. Now this is an amendment which was made in 2003. Prior to that, it there was a provision that the order passed by the district forum state commission or the national commission will be treated as a decree and it will be filed as if it is a uh, it will be filed in the manner of a, a, a chapter 21 of the cpc namely a execution under the civil court uh, there were criticisms so therefore uh, the amendment was made in 2003 but as of today uh, so far as that execution through collector is concerned again it is uh, a time consuming process because uh, we are in Maharashtra so therefore the provisions of uh, 
Maharashtra Land Revenue Code are applicable. You will find that the Sildar uh, is a authority against whom there is a, a remedy by a for appeal to the collector, from collector to the commissioner, commissioner to the government. So therefore, there is a tedious mechanism for recovery of uh, the areas of the land revenue. So therefore, uh, that remedy is not uh, uh, giving uh, easy execution or a uh, timely execution of the uh, uh, order. There is a section 27 which says that there will be penalty. This is proving as uh, this has been proved as one of the uh, teeth of the Consumer Protection Act. This contemplate that if the order is not implemented by the uh, opposite party, trader, manufacturer, etc., then that uh, manufacturer, trader, or the service provider will be sentenced to suffer imprisonment. Now, the something interesting question will come that this is a mechanism where one judge plus two non judge, non judicial persons are there. Then how are they going to uh, deliver the justice? So, therefore, uh, about the criminal law. The power has been given. Uh, a diminishing provision is created that the district forum or the state commission or the national commission will be exercising the power under the criminal procedure code. So this is as good as a criminal trial, so far as the criminal uh, aspect, namely section 27, is concerned. And you will be surprised to know that large number of cases are getting settled immediately as soon as the bailable or non-bailable warrants are issued. Large number of cases are uh, settled and the uh, uh, defaulting parties have been put to uh, 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 undergo the uh, uh, undergo the rigorous uh, simple imprisonment. So therefore, there is a teeth so far as this act is concerned. And as compared to section 21, uh, sorry, chapter 21 of uh, the civil procedure code, this seems to be a uh, convenient, faster, and the uh, cheaper remedy. There is a appeal under section 27, capital A of the Consumer Protection Act. So therefore the person who is convicted under section 27 he can go and file an appeal this is in nutshell a mechanism so far as the consumer protection act is concerned now so far as the state of maharashtra is concerned i must tell you something some interesting fact uh, as i said 44 district forums are concerned out of which 22 forums are having uh, honorable district judges either uh, sitting or retired who are uh, appointed as a president and 50%, namely 22 per post, are reserved for the advocates. So therefore, that uh, these this is one of the good opportunity. Those persons who are willing to join the judicial career, they can be appointed as a uh, president of the district forum. Initial term will be five years. It can be extended by another five years. So, to, so the total uh, tenure will be for 10 years. So far as uh, the today's situation is concerned, we are aware that there is a, uh, um, a video conferencing which is going on on account of this corona uh, situation uh, we are unable to go to the court this was envisaged uh, long back and the entire state of maharashtra so far as the consumer uh, uh, laws are concerned it has initiated e-filing so that e-filing has been effectively going on under the consumer protection act in the state of maharashtra you can file a complaint from your place of residence or a or online uh, so far as the arguments are concerned unfortunately the uh, as on today the filing is only e filing e argument is uh, concerned uh, the advocates are ready and willing and i'm sure the e argument will also take place in near future now these are the certain uh, features and the uh, uh, things which are uh, there in the state of maharashtra but the question comes as to why the central government thought it fit to introduce a new legislation now in the last uh, several years you must have seen that there is in the tremendous increase in the e-commerce online transactions are happening rapidly there was no specific provision with reference to the e-commerce under the old act and so far as e-commerce is concerned of course there were different territorial issues like the person who is at a receiving end whether that's a place, whether the transaction which is routed through the server. So therefore, whether the server is kept will be a place where the complaint can be executed, complaint can be filed. These were there were different debates which were going on about that. And ultimately, although digital consumers or the digital uh, ebook, uh, uh, e-commerce uh, era, whichever uh, uh, name you may call that era 
or that particular type of the consumers are covered under the new act namely consumer protection act 19 2019 but as i said that up till now the act uh, has been notified but accounted date has not yet been declared so therefore this online transaction e-commerce as well as the digital transactions are concerned all those are directly and specifically covered under the new act namely the consumer protection act 2019 along with that the pecuniary jurisdiction is also increased we are aware that anybody who is uh, uh, purchasing a house in mumbai he will have to spend uh, uh, in crores if somebody goes in the suburb then of course it will be more than rupees 20 lakh so therefore we will have to go to the state commission or the national commission in the uh, prevailing uh, uh, provisions of the law but so far as the uh, but so far as the uh, 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 new uh, uh, act is concerned it has been extended now the district forum will have a jurisdiction up to 1 crore and up to 5 crore the jur territorial jurisdiction will be for the uh, state commission and above 5 crore it will be at a national commission now this is a pecuniary jurisdiction which is uh, sought to be increased by virtue of the new act in addition to this the product liability has been added what is this product liability usually we are saying that uh, the under the indian law the product liability is not there let us go back to the sale of goods act let us go back to the contract act let us go back to the consumer protection act 1986 you will not find the product liability is there uh, i'll give a illustration that uh, there is a a uh, car which is purchased or a two wheeler each which is purchased if you find there is a manufacturing defect in that vehicle then there can be a replacement otherwise if it is repairable then there can be repair this is a law as on today but the liability of that product is not specifically covered along with that those persons who are doing an advertisement about that product they are also held uh, they are as a person responsible with reference to that product so this is a new area which is uh, introduced under the act but as i said that uh, appointed date has not yet been declared the reason for the same is very simple there are large number of uh, interest which are conflicting as i said product liability as i said uh, uh, the online transaction as i said e-commerce and uh, uh, even when the medical uh, lobby is also very strong lobby in india so they are still putting their pressure and uh, right or wrong uh, the honorable uh, uh, the rather not honorable the, the central government ministry has not yet uh, 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 taken a decision for declaring the appointed date now few more things which i wish to point out like uh, uh, so far as advocates are concerned there were cases which were filed against the advocate under the consumer protection act we are providing services the matter where uh, matters were filed up to the honorable supreme court uh, and uh, in view of the uh, supreme court uh, proceeding uh, now uh, as on today the advocates are outside the purview of consumer protection act uh, so therefore it is possible that in the near future there is uh, a judgment which will be uh, decided uh, in or against the uh, interest of an advocate we will have to keep this in mind you will find so far as the honorable uh, now, Bombay High Court is concerned in the public interest litigation filed by Mumbai Grah Panchayat. It is supervising the issue of uh, providing infrastructure to all uh, district forums and uh, the state commission, uh, etc., in the state of Maharashtra. So, therefore, in the near future, we are expecting that uh, uh, these are the places where uh, uh, large number of advocates will get good opportunities. I must tell you one more aspect that uh, not only advocates, there are authorized representatives who are also permitted to uh, appear before the district forum or the state commission or the national commission. Uh, national commission has framed the accreditation rules and based on which the exams are conducted and uh, some authorized representatives are permitted by the state commission. As on today, there is a list of around nine uh, such uh, authorized representatives who have been recognized by the state of Maharashtra. So therefore, these are the nine persons who are likely to compete against the advocate. And of course, the matter is required to be taken to the Honorable High Court or the Supreme Court level challenging those regulations because we advocates are answerable to our, advoc our litigants 
but those authorities representative are not uh, answerable we are governed by the rules of ethics they are not answerable one more uh, shortcoming of this uh, entire act is this act is coming under the purview of consumer affair ministry of the central or the state government now this is one of the drawback according to me as a student of law if the this is uh, consumer laws are replacing the traditional disputes and large number of cases are being filed every year uh, then it, there is a need to bring this consumer uh, uh, agencies namely district forum state commission or national commission under the purview of the umbrella of the high court you are aware that uh, similar was the situation long back about uh, 30 years back so far as the co cooperative department is concerned cooperative court uh, uh, the judges of the cooperative court were being appointed by the uh, by the cooperative department of the state of maharashtra the matters were filed before the bombay high court and bombay high court ultimately took over the same and uh, now under the umbrella of the uh, high bombay high court now the judges are appointed so therefore appointment uh, transfer uh, disciplinary uh, authority etc vest in the bombay high court the similar is uh, a need uh, so far as the consumer protection act is concerned so that there will be a better uh, administration of the uh, or and the settlement of the consumer disputes uh, this is an act which has given a uh, 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 new opening to large number of advocates in the state of maharashtra around uh, uh, 3000 to 4000 lawyers are practicing in before the different district forums and this uh, these number of uh, the number of uh, advocates are increasing and as a young lawyers i can tell you very frankly that this is a one of the good opportunity where the senior lawyers are not coming nowadays uh, it is uh, giving a, a comparatively easy faster and convenient result so therefore you can think of uh, uh, starting your career in the consumer protection act this is almost 45 46 minutes i am sorry for encroachment i was uh, asked to speak for 45 minutes i have encroached for one and a half minute almost i am sorry to the organizers now you can ask questions